Uh, my name is Juan Parras, and I'm the director of Texas Environmental Justice Advocacy Services. And I'm going to show you a five to six minute video that was done by some volunteer students that came to help us. Initially, they came to help us because of the tar sand, uh, the tar sand oils and the Keystone pipelines. And uh, one thing that we did tell them is that because Obama approved the southern leg, we are already actually getting Keystone oil, the tar sands oil. So while there's a lot of victories, we, we still have no victory in our community. And where the, where the oil has been refined is in this community here that's an environmental justice community. And I think that uh, those of you that are not familiar probably with the term environmental justice, of course it was an executive order passed in 1994, and it just deals with a huge burden that is placed on low-income communities, communities of color that are continuously, you know, being overburdened with pollution, all kinds of issues, right? And I think this video would demonstrate that precisely as to why we fight for environmental justice communities and try to help them out as much as we can. And what I see in this group is a, a group of allies because for once I see that there's an issue that is having huge impact, not only on EJ communities, which are already overburdened, but on a whole different people of color, okay? And, and I think that that is going to hopefully join us together and start also helping out EJ communities because they desperately need your help. So take a look at this video. Uh, you, in the beginning, you may not hear a lot because it's kind of low, low voice, so raise your hand if it's not loud enough and maybe I can turn the, the volume up. But it's, uh, here it goes. Let me see if you can see it. In the foreground of this image, you can see the Houston neighborhood of Manchester. In the background, there are multiple plumes of unidentified gases coming from a petroleum refinery operated by Valero Energy Corporation. This single refinery emits millions of pounds of poisonous and carcinogenic gases every year. Three of the four sides of Manchester are surrounded by this refinery. The remaining side is blocked in by a train yard 25 tracks wide. This side of the refinery completely blocks the view of what used to be Buffalo Bayou. Now it is known as the Houston Ship Channel. This once thriving ecosystem has been reduced to a mere machine at the service of commerce. The Karankawa people lived along the banks of this bayou for thousands of years, drinking its waters and eating its fish. Since European colonists began settling along its banks in the early 19th century, it has become a mechanism to produce capital and serve the interests of business. Today, industrial development continues uninterrupted from downtown Houston, 50 miles southeast to the Gulf of Mexico. This giant symbol of colonialism and capitalism comprises the largest petrochemical complex on Earth and one of the most environmentally destructive projects ever carried out. Valero is not the only corporation polluting the air and water of the neighborhood. This is Manchester, in the center of this image. Now highlighted is the Valero refinery, a Rodea specialty chemical plant, a car crushing facility, a wastewater treatment plant, a Lion Elba Sol Sitgo refinery, a large train yard for hazardous cargo, a Goodyear synthetic rubber plant, a Texas petrochemicals refinery, and on top of all of that, one of the busiest highways in Houston. The third ward and fifth ward, Manchester, all the surrounding neighborhoods that are around downtown area are the oldest neighborhoods. And they get affected more by the pollution because the power plants are so close to the inner city. So I think that people need to really take, take uh, into consideration that these neighborhoods are suffering. The chemicals go in the clouds and it rains and the, the chemicals come right back down. It's pretty much obvious. They don't take rocket sciences. You know, kids know that. You go to, you know, you talk to a third grader in school and they're going to know that the chemical, whatever goes in the clouds with the rain, it comes back down. So, I mean, people need to understand that these neighborhoods are getting affected by these chemicals. <laughs> Uh, 
pero qué se puede hacer si hacemos un grupo mino, uh, ¿cómo se llama? minoritario que no podemos hacer nada y solamente tenemos que aguantar las cosas que pasan aquí y también tenemos, y también tenemos la, la, la que muele carros aquí enseguida pa, al otro lado del, del, del 610 que, que muele y, y sobre todo los, los carros en los frenos contienen mucho asbesto y todo eso al estar moliendo se están yendo en, en el aire, en el, en el polvo y pues no se puede hacer nada pero no solamente estamos recibiendo todos esos químicos The neighborhoods of Manchester and Magnolia and other neighborhoods within the east end of Houston are living examples of environmental racism because definitely we have the highest incidence of diesel emissions because of the heavy traffic that is going toward the ports. The actual presence of the port within the neighborhoods which requires tons of, uh, of emissions from all the vessel, maritime vessels and ships that that come to the port, and the constant traffic of trains, all the compiled activity that goes to supplement industry or its industry itself, such as the shipping industry or the petrochemical industry or the freight industry, all of it combines to increase the presence of air contaminants and therefore makes our neighborhoods the most polluted neighborhoods in the United States. about a lot of things and I stand up for what I believe in and if it affects the kids then yeah it's a big problem it's a big deal it's a real big deal so I'm willing I'm willing to to, to stand up for what I believe in so so I suffer a lot and I cough all the time whenever I go to the park oh. so Valero stop poisoning our community I'm going to try to do a PowerPoint. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah. I'm close. <coughs> I'm not high tech, S tech either, okay? <laughs> well, just, just to let you know that uh, on this picture you're looking at, uh, to your left, I mean, to, to your right, I guess, and to my left is uh, a map of the, uh, where the trains will be carrying the backing oil and tar sands oil. I don't have a bigger copy of it, I, otherwise I would show, you, show it to you. But it's probably the biggest concentration of trains going through a, a huge area such as Houston. And it's all primarily in the neighborhoods that are low-income communities, the East End. There's approximately 1,200 roadway road, road crossings with a daily volume of almost 5 million vehicles within the city of Houston. Uh, the Federal Railroad Administration has, re has reported for Harris County along more than 300 incidents between tra trains and vehicles at public and private railroad crossings occurring since January 2000. There are uh, more than 90 injuries and seven, seven fat fatalities that have taken place. Most recently, we've had uh, five train derailments. Uh, great crossings, I just want to tell you that there's a lot of great crossings that are taking place in our community, primarily because the uh, Panama Canal is going to have a huge impact on Gulf states. And so already, they are closing down a lot of uh, street crossings in our community. This is a street crossing that obviously uh, took place in 2004. And when we, t when we talked to the Texas Department of transportation, they tell us that crossings like this should not be up longer than two weeks. Uh, this is, you know, almost, two, uh, what, 11 years? Uh, it's still like that? This is a study that's been done to address the, estimate of the cost of great separations, uh, closing streets down, and for citizens in the Houston inner city neighborhood, it means freedom from blocked intersections and backed up vehicles. It's, it states on here, but what it 
instead is creating is that we're not only being blocked in by the trains because of the street closures in case of an emergency, then we have to seek other routes. But we also have this situation here where 18 wheelers that try to pass this street get stuck right in the middle because of the long base. And this is, I mean, this happens almost once a month. And uh, what they tell us is that the railroad industry, they'll say, well, it's not, it's, it's not our fault. You know, we, we can't fix the grade because that belongs to the city. And the city says they're not going to do anything to, you know, either elevate, you know, the, the ground there so it won't get stuck on there. So nobody wants to take responsibility. But our point here is that if a train, if a train carrying hazardous cargo or even a truck carrying hazardous cargo runs into this, it's going to be right in the middle of our community and there's a park to the left of it. Uh, chemical security is a, is a serious threat to the East End. As you know, uh, right now, Obama signed an executive order on chemical security, uh, dealing with regulations, rules, uh, guidance, policy, and standards. But his administration is almost at the end of the term. So if nothing happens by the end of this year regarding that executive order, we may be stuck with no regulation at all, which will continue to you know, have huge impacts in our community. And, and this Chemical Security Act, uh, this is where you all can take part of it and be included is that it includes the transportation of it. That means trucks, rail, anything. And it includes uh, the, the storage of and then the processes of. So those are three key issues that can be linked into this chemical security policy to help us deal with what's going on in our communities. This is downtown city of Houston, uh, where you can see a train in the backyard. If, if any terrorists, you know, we talk about terrorists uh, doing something crazy here. After 9-11, let me just tell you, the Attorney General for the Southern State of Texas uh, went and made a speech on at Texas Southern University, and this is six months after 9-11. And one of the things that I clearly remember, because I was in the audience, he stated that of all the major cities in the nation, we all sent, he says, a list of all potential terrorist targets. And he said, Houston is the only city that checked off on all of those potential targets. Of course, at that time, they didn't tell us how, you know, how many were on the list or what the, the targets were. But we're number one as far as you know, potential targets. And this is an easy target, like somebody says, we don't know, trains going down through the downtown section of town. We've had train derailment. Uh, this is one of them in our community, again, right next to apartments, as you can see. If it had been coming hazardous cargo, so uh, it would have been serious, serious, okay? This is another train derailment that we had, similar, and this one had hazardous cargo, but it didn't leak. And here's the, the equipment that has to be, you know, transported to an area that when you have a trade derailment, you have to deal immediately with it. There's another report that came out, Who's in Danger, done by the Common Clean Group and also by the Environmental Justice and Health Alliance that reports on chemical security incidents that have huge impacts on communities. And we're talking about risk management plan. You know how they do uh, the risk management plan. They'll show, show you the circumference and they'll show you the radius of impact. Uh, this report highlights a lot of communities uh, at risk, and we have literally hundreds of them in our communities because we're inundated with 52 miles of, you know, refiners and chemical plants. The, who, the Who's in Danger report also continues to say that, you know, most of the impacted communities are low-income black um, uh, African-American communities and Latino communities. I'm trying to go through this quickly uh, because obviously we don't have a lot of time. But I also, you know, just want to highlight some things that we're working at. So, so look, I'm just going to, well, well this, I, I missed the slide because I was going too quickly. But I was going to show you where, on this slide, you'll see a train at the very far end. And then the other picture was on the opposite direction, showing you where a train's coming. So there's two trains, you know, one coming from opposite direction. And they're both waiting on each other to actually get to a crossing where one of them will pass. The, the, this is when we went to the Healing Walk in uh, Canada. Uh, we participate in the Healing Walk because obviously we're against the Keystone and any oil, dirty oils that come to our communities. This is the Cesar Chavez School, and right in front of the Cesar Chavez School is the railroad tracks that could potentially uh, harm the, the students that are going there, uh, 3,000 students. But behind it also is Texas Petrochemical, Exxon Mobil, a quarter of a mile from the school. We fought against the siding of the school, but we didn't win that battle. This is the picture of the video that you saw, the, 
Uh, on this video, you'll, you'll see where it says Rodea, but it's now it's Savoy. And that company is the, it's a fertilizer plant, has ammonia nitrate, and if that plant were to blow up, it has a 25 mile radius impact. So that, that includes downtown, okay? Downtown Houston. Uh, here's some more pictures. On, on the same tracks where you saw the 18 wheeler stuck on the track, we also had a, a plant, uh, a storage house that caught on fire, but the fire department couldn't get on it because they closed all the streets in our neighborhood, you know? So it took a long time for the fire department to put that fire out. Recommendations, we have a lot. Uh, this one here, I don't see the worst thing come out, but it says, you know, we're going to put our lives on the line and we have to stop. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, when our voices aren't uh, enough, then there will come a time when we must lay our bodies on the line, right? That's one of our youth organizers. And, uh, and this is my son. Uh, last year he was picked as one of the seven change makers in the state of Texas. And this should hear, read where the change makers are made. But again, I'm not high tech, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this are facilities that have 10,000 pounds or more of toxic chemicals that are in, in the east end of Houston. We have a lot of good videos. We have a lot of good maps. But obviously, 15 minutes does not give us enough time, and uh, I will end it at that, okay? Thank you. Woo!